Town Council meets tonight to chat about what's on the agenda. We have with us President Eric Steinhelber. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, the meeting will start off with a couple presentations. Uh, first, they're going to be talking about shellfish aquaculture and a program overview there. Who will be giving this presentation? Sure. Well, uh, thanks for uh, having me, Sarah. Um, yeah, tonight we're going to have uh, we're going to have that presentation, and uh, Mark Ellis will be our town manager. Mark Ellis will be talking about that. And what that program gets into uh, kind of ties into the 208 plan, which um, all the towns on the Cape are looking at ways to address your know, wastewater issues um, beyond just a uh, you know big pipe solution, which was kind of the big idea several years back, but there was a lot of pushback on that, as you probably remember. And uh, so we're looking at different ways to address it. One of those ways is through, um, uh, you know, shellfish, aquaculture, um, because things like oysters, you know, they can actually filter tens of gallons of uh, water per day, which kind of pulls the nitrates out of the water. And the uh, flip side of that is this uh, economic development, you know, for the Cape. Um, obviously, oysters are very popular and other shellfish. Uh, so it's kind of a win-win type of program. We'll, we won't solve the wastewater issue by itself, but it's going to be a part of the solution. So we want to get moving on that as soon as possible. Yeah, nice to have, I think, a combination of efforts. And I think that's what uh, bodies like the Cape Cod Commission have really uh, suggested is sort of looking at alternative ways and not just going with that sewering. Uh, because, of course, we know that's very costly and uh, may not have the effect that we want. So then there's uh, another discussion on the agenda, too, about non-residential zoning uh, district review. Tell me a little bit about this. Yep, uh, town manager will be going over that as well, uh, potentially uh uh, planning department will take part in that in addition to him. Um, so basically what that's going to do, is, it's kind of a workshop in a way it's to go over all the various uh, zoning overlays and definitions and what everything means. When you kind of look at a map, it can get uh, very convoluted with zoning. Uh, you can have a parcel that touches, you know, two, three, four types of zoning. You know, what type of zoning supersedes the other. Um, so it's a way for the council just to uh, kind of get you know, fully up to speed on that. And actually, in addition to that, uh, tonight I'll be uh, announcing the formation of a committee I'm putting together uh, at the council level, which is going to look into uh, finding recommendations to, to change zoning, uh, possibly regulations in town to really streamline uh, economic development uh, to help us uh, produce more new growth dollars, but in addition, uh, be able to address uh, housing needs in the town where we need um, to be able to have a higher density uh, for something to make make sense. Because, um, again, tying back into wastewater, if you're building, you know, putting together a housing uh, place with several apartments, um, you know, you need to be able to have the density there to make, uh, you know, the costs come together uh, so it's not cost prohibitive. So it's going to be a big focus of the council this year is looking into zoning um, for those two items. Uh, so we're uh, looking forward to, to digging in on that and making some, some changes in a positive way. Yeah, very exciting to hear about that committee. I'm assuming that's going to be a town council subcommittee uh, filled with counselors. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, we may have a couple of liaisons uh, as well from uh, some other committees, but uh, it will be uh, formed with uh, five counselors. Yeah, exciting stuff. Uh, a good way to work towards uh, progressing and future efforts. I want to talk to you a little bit to uh, old business. Nothing too important. I think we have some p uh, acceptances to board committee and commission posts uh, that'll be voted on. And then moving to new business, uh, there is a grant. Uh, this is kind of exciting. The pol I assume this is for the police department. Uh, $14,460 for some portable radios. Those, as we know, that equipment can be so expensive. So doing a great job there getting a grant from the uh, Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. Yep, uh, we have a lot of the, the police. So some of the radios are really becoming obsolete. So some of them are 20, 25 years old. And nowadays, it's very important to be able to communicate with all of the uh, police departments on Cape Cod, uh, as well as the sheriff's department, the Mass State Police. Uh, so um, we'll allow them to replace, uh, I believe, five, five of those radios. So it's, uh, you know, with the police department's constantly working to upgrade, um, you know, the equipment to stay up uh, so we have the best, you know, technology available for our police force. Um, so we're looking forward to bringing that forward. 
Uh, and then, of course, we have a, an appropriation and transfer order on the agenda and new business uh, for the amount of $95,000. Uh, this is to really fund costs associated with uh, notice of responsibility uh, issued by the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection involving some work at the airport. What can you tell me about this item? Sure. Well, I think you probably remember the uh, issue we had with the uh, Mary Dunwell, um, where the PFOS was found in the well. Uh, the EPA had, you know, kind of raised or lowered, however you want to look at it, uh, the amount of parts per trillion that you could find in water. So we've addressed the Mary Dunwells and the Marwells at the airport with either uh, filters or mixing in um, uh, clean water. So there's no issue at all with the, with the drinking water. But going forward, the state has issued um, what's called a you know, issue of potential responsible party to the airport uh, for the Marwells. They did the same to uh, Barnstable County. Uh, as you know, there's an issue with the Barnstable County Fire Academy, which you know is a direct uh, contributor to the issue with the Mary Dunwells. Um, but the airport's a little bit more of a cloudy situation. Uh, a lot of this has to do with you know wells being down gradient of areas where. Um, in the past, they've used fire foam for training and that type of stuff. And obviously at the airport, they have drills, safety drills, uh, where in the past, you know, they may have used this type of foam. So basically, this is a, a money that um, they need to put together an immediate response action, uh, is what it's called. Uh, so they do have uh, Torsley Witten on contract with the airport to kind of deal with environmental issues. Um, so that this will allow them to kind of look into the, the issue and, and take care of anything um, that's going on there at the airport. Yeah, so important. And then, of course, the airport is, uh, an has another appropriation and transfer order of $138,000. And this is just for a project uh, to paint slurry seal and paint uh, the airport terminal aircraft parking apron. What can you tell me about this? Sure. The uh, parking apron uh, by the terminal uh, had some work done in 2010 and 2014. And at that time, you know, they had done the, the, the kind of sealed inspections. But this will put a full, um, you know, seal across the whole apron. And basically it preserves the, the pavement there. We have, you know, obviously a lot of traffic coming through. We have JetBlue um, airliners coming through there now. So it, it prolongs the life of the, the pavement and the, uh, you know, the parking area on the, near the terminal for, for the aircraft. Yeah, always good to spend money to make things last longer. Instead of replacing yeah, they, well, it, right? the other good thing about this, actually, it's uh, you know, we spend the money out of the air, airport enterprise fund, but then uh, it's eligible for 95% uh, reimbursement. So most of the money will be uh, reimbursed. You know, reimbursed once once the uh, work is done through the FAA and also uh, MassDOT. Wonderful. That's great news. It does. It's not yeah. often that you hear that, right? Uh, no. Then I want to talk about uh, a. Uh, I think Councillor Fred Shiragotis uh, put in an order forward for $500,000 uh, from community preservation funds, and this is really looking at that plot of land again on Long Beach Road. Uh, is this a new step, or is this a continuation of, of an old effort? Yeah, Councillor Shiragotis, he's not the sponsor of this. It actually is coming through the town manager's office. I think on the original agenda, uh, there was a typo there, but we, we fixed it and rep reposted it. Um, this kind of reaches back to 2013, actually before I was on the council. They had set aside uh, money from the Community Preservation Fund um, to look into acquiring a piece of property, uh, which is called Cross Street over on Long Beach. Um, for a long time, it was uh, basically assumed it was uh, a town way to water. There's two ways to get to the beach on Long Beach Road there. Um, but then there was a challenge in court, and... Um, not to get into all the legal details, because um, a lot of it is an executive session, but basically the state court uh, found that uh, it was actually private property, um, and it's gone on for a few years, kind of back and forth in the courts, and it's just got to a point where we're um, a housekeeping item in a way to kind of pull these funds back into the CPC fund so they can be uh, you know, reallocated to other uh, you know, needs and, and projects in town. Okay, great. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Uh, and then sure. a final item I want to discuss before I let you go. Uh, this is exciting. We may soon have a new assistant town manager. Council will be voting on the appointment of uh, Michael Andrew Clyburn. Uh, what can you tell me about this? Yeah, we're excited about that. As you know, uh, town manager Ellis began in uh, July, so he's been uh, kind of a one-man show since then. Um, he's, gone through, you know, he's gone through a very thorough process. We had... Um, 
you know, and he's kept the town council leadership apprised of the process. He has great candidates, great finalists. Um, but uh, I think he's, he's made a you know great decision. I was able to meet um, uh, meet him on uh, Tuesday night uh, at the Citizens Academy, and uh, we look forward to him uh, you know coming on board. And um, I think it's, he's going to be a really valuable um, a member uh, to our team. Yeah, I did a little research online. I think uh, is he currently the commanding officer at the Coast Guard base on Cape Cod? Correct. So he's got a right. wealth of experience on managing the Coast Guard base here on Cape Cod. Yeah, he is a very much a professional manager, a uh, solid, solid individual. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of challenges uh, and opportunities that we have as a, as a town. And uh, having him as part of the, uh, you know, the town manager's office is really going to be uh, helpful, not only to uh, manage your health, but, uh, you know, to all the departments and, and, and all of us that, you know, want to move some stuff forward in town. Absolutely. I'm sure that Mark is going to be really thrilled to finally have an assistant. Thank you so much for joining us today and breaking down the town council agenda. We really appreciate it and I look forward to chatting with you in a couple weeks. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Talk Thank to you then. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Our guest today, of course, a town council president, Eric Steinhelber.